Hi, welcome back. I'm Daniel Zafer Joyce, and this video is going to talk a little bit about channeling, specifically what it is. I get that question a lot. <laughs> what is channeling? It's bringing in higher consciousness. That's the short answer. It's looking to a source of consciousness that is above our perspective here on Earth and enabling ourselves to receive instruction or direction. And I'd like to take a minute here to talk about what channeling isn't. First off, channeling isn't mediumship. That is a different phenomenon. Uh, it is related, but I'm bringing in higher consciousness, which are spiritual teachers, angels. Those are sometimes loaded words, but it's essentially bringing in guidance from perspectives that are a higher vibration than our own. Now, this doesn't mean that they're better than us or greater than us. All consciousness is equal because all consciousness comes from the same source. Some people channel source consciousness directly. I have yet to tackle that. It's kind of a big calling, and I wouldn't just go out and do that without uh, building up to it, probably. <laughs> but the different types of guides that I bring in are all of a higher perspective. So they have a different view of the way our world works. And that can be very helpful. If you're lost in a valley, it can be helpful to get air support and find out what's it look like up there. That's basically what channeling is. We're checking in with a higher perspective. In mediumship, you have the calling in of a deceased human being, usually. And that's okay, but it is not what I do because in those cases, you're dealing with a lot of human perspectives and biases, and that information can be a little bit muddy. It's not as clear of guidance when you're looking for a more objective approach to a situation that you're facing. Despite appearances, channeling is also not pure. Some people will take a channeled message as the authority, and it's important to know that every single channel that you've ever heard is a blending of the consciousness that's being brought in and the person who's doing the channeling the channel. So when I bring in Seth and he gives advice, it's a co-creation. It's about 50% Seth and 50% me. So my job as the channel is to try to remove as much of myself as possible. I'm trying to be as neutral and objective so that you get the clearest information possible. However, their information is still coming through my own subconscious. It's coming through my existing worldview, the beliefs that I hold. And while I try everything I can, because I value my integrity, <laughs> to set those things off to the side, I cannot be completely impartial. I just can't because I'm a human being. So when you hear channeled information, regardless of the source, bear in mind that you're also hearing some flavoring from whoever the channel is, from the ideas they already hold. That's why it's important to think about what resonates with you when you listen to a message. Sometimes you might get something that doesn't sink in. It doesn't feel right. And that doesn't necessarily mean it's wrong. Maybe you need to digest it. But your authority and your discernment is always the most important thing. All I'm doing is giving you as clean a message as I possibly ethically can. Then it's up to you to decide what to do with that information. Your seniority, your sovereignty is always of paramount importance. All that is why I say that channeling is not prescriptive either. I'm never going to tell you what you should do and neither is Seth or any of the other guides that I bring in. Our job is to give you all the information that you can have. That way, you're more informed when it's time for you to make your decision about what you're going to do next in your life or about what the right next step is for you spiritually, in a relationship, or whatever topic you're seeking counsel on. If someone is trying to pressure you into a certain course of action, that's a red flag that their biases are playing a part in the message. It's okay for them to give an opinion, but it should never be 
telling you that one thing is the right choice and another is completely wrong. You have free will. You get to decide what to do with this information and you get to make your own choices. Sometimes people come asking for information about the future. Listen, <laughs> it's great to get a peek, but your choices are constantly impacting what future is taking shape. So when Seth or any of these guides looks into the future, they're looking at the most likely outcome based on the path you're already on. If you take a big job change or move cities or start a relationship, that's gonna change the outcome's potential. It doesn't mean it's not gonna happen, but it might change the timing. Or it might lead you on an diff entirely different path, which is okay. Always know that wherever you are is exactly where you're supposed to be right now. Okay, I've told you what channeling isn't. Let me reiterate what it is. Channeling is guidance. It's giving you a perspective that you don't have. That way you have the best information possible to move forward and make the best decision that's right for you. Channeling is also a conversation between the channel and the guide, as well as between us and you. We're trying to answer your question the best way we know how. Sometimes that information isn't going to be the most useful to you, but we're doing our best. So take it with a grain of salt and know that ultimately we respect whatever decision you come to. Also a reminder, channeling is a co-creation process. I'm doing my best to remove as much of my biases as possible, but they're still there under the surface. They're still going to color a little bit of that message as it comes through. I commit to you that I will always give you the cleanest, most neutral message possible. My goal is to bring guidance through as clearly as I can, and I will always commit to that 100%. And lastly, a reminder that channeling is not about a fixed outcome, especially when talking about the future. Don't get too hung up on what you think should happen. You don't want to should all over yourself. It's important to recognize that the things that are happening are what matter. Can you find the good in what's going on in your life right now? Even when it's unpleasant, there's always some kind of lesson or opportunity for growth inside that unpleasant event. I know that's hard to hear, but I promise it is transformational when you learn to put that into practice. Thanks once again for checking out my channel. I hope I was able to answer some of your questions. If you have more, please drop them in the comments below. You can email me at universalreiki at icloud.com, or you can visit my website. Thanks, and I hope you come back again soon. I'll be posting a different channel each week, and I am excited to start this journey with all of you.